Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to check the RC Benchmark 1585 frost end, which is going to replace the 1520 frost end, which I've been using for the last 6 months or so. The main reason for the upgrade is that the 1520 frost end is limited to 40 amperes, whereas the 1585 frost end is limited to 55 amperes, and on top of that it supports more accessories and will enable me to provide you with more informative motor reviews. In this video, I'm going to assemble the frost stand, go over its features and specs, and show you how to use it. First of all, in terms of packaging, inside the box you can find all the components and parts which are well organized and well protected. Inside the box you can find the quick start guide, and of course more information is available online, the main board of the frost stand, an extra long USB to mini USB cable, which is going to enable you to connect the frost stand to your computer, the base, top and motor plates of the frost stand, which are made out of high quality powder coated aluminum, three load cells, the main one can measure up to 5 kg force, and the two other ones which are used in order to calculate the torque can measure up to 2 kg force, a 200 g weight which is used in order to calibrate the frost stand, and 12 gauge power cables which according to this warning are limited to 40 amperes. In order to assemble the frost stand, first attach the 5 kg force load cell to the base plate using two M4 screws and make sure that the servo wires are coming out of its right side. Then using two M5 screws, secure the upper structural part. Using two M5 screws on each side, secure the 2 kg force load cells to the upper structural part and make sure that the servo wires are facing the inner side of the frost stand. Using the shorter 5mm M4 screws, secure the two hinges which you can find inside the accessory bag on each side of the motor mounting part. Then use these hinges along with two 5mm M4 screws on each side in order to secure the motor mounting part to the 2 kg force load cells. Use two M4 washers, screws and spacers in order to secure the main board to the top structural part. Properly align the 2 kg force load cells and fasten the screws that are securing them. Connect the servo connectors of the three load cells to the main board. Connect battery leads to the main board and make sure that the VCC is connected to the power input and ground is connected to ground. Now in case you haven't done it already, download from rcbenchmark.com the data acquisition software which is available for Windows, Linux and Mac and connect the frost stand to your computer using the provided mini USB to USB cable. The first thing that you need to do is to update the firmware of the frost stand to the latest available version, and then using the provided 200 grams weight, follow the instructions on the screen and calibrate the torque and thrust sensors. You should note that in case you would like to make your life easier, you can purchase this accessory that is going to enable you to easily attach and deattach motors, and in case you are going to purchase it, I recommend to first install it and also install the ESC before following the sensor's calibration procedure. As for connecting the ESC to the main board, connect the VCC and ground wires to their designated positions and make sure that they are properly secured. Connect the ground and signal wires from the ESC to the ESC servo connector and in case you would like to measure RPM using the electrical RPM sensor, you'll need to either solder a wire between one of the motor phases and connect it to the RPM probe and in case you are going to use the motor mounting accessory, you can use this pin which is located on the bottom of the board. In addition, an optical RPM probe for testing brushed motors is available as well. In order to use it, you will need to mount it next to the motor, place a piece of the provided reflective tape on the motor, connect the probe to the signal 1 port of the main board using the provided servo connector, and configure it using RC Benchmark software. Another accessory which you can use is the temperature probe, and in order to use it you'll need to connect the JST connector to the main board and place the exposed end of the probe next to the object that you would like to measure its temperature. As for using the RC Benchmark software, after connecting the thrust end, you'll be able to monitor all the sensors on the main screen. Under the setup tab, you'll be able to select the main RPM sensor, Select the walking units of the torque, thrust, weight, motor speed, temperature, speed and pressure. Upgrade the firmware of the thrust stand as I've shown you earlier. Select the walking directory where all the thrust tests are going to be saved. Under app migration you'll be able to backup, restore or clear the settings of the app. 
Under temperature sensors, you'll be able to customize each sensor which is connected to the main board. And under GUI settings, you'll be able to activate debug mode, activate experimental scripting mode, and send anonymous usage data. Next, under the Utilities tab, you'll be able to calibrate the thrust stand and reverse the sign of the thrust and torque. Keep in mind though that by default, these values are not reversed and it is recommended to use a pusher setup. In case you're having issues with the measured current, you can calibrate the current sensor. Under Control Protocol, you can set the signal, which is by default set to PWM at 50 Hz, and if you'd like to set it to different types of signals, you will have to purchase a control board expansion. In addition, you'll be able to set the safety cutoff throttle value and set the limits for the manual control sliders. Next, under the safety cutoff tab, which is very important since it can save your expensive equipment, you'll be able to set the boundaries of the measured values. Under manual control, you can set the output value of each signal port individually. And finally, under automatic control, which is probably the most useful tab, you'll be able to run automated tests using JavaScript and the well-documented API that is provided by RC Benchmark. Now I think that we are all set and we can start the first test, but before a small word of advice, remember that you are dealing with very dangerous equipment and you should also be extremely careful when bench testing motors. The custom automated test that I ran, which is the one that I normally use in order to bench test motors, tests the motor at 10% speed WM signal intervals, each tested for 2 seconds. Here you can see the recorded CSV file. The first column indicates the amount of time in seconds that elapsed since starting the test. The second column indicates the EFC signal, and similarly in case other servo ports were in use, the corresponding values were displayed as well. Next we can find the recorded accelerometer data, then the measured torque. This is a column that I added in order to show you how the mechanical power is being calculated, and I'm going to get to it in a second. The thrust is of course recorded, then the voltage, current, the motor electrical speed, the motor optical speed, which indicates zero since the optical sensor was not connected. Next we can find the electrical power, which is measured in watts, and is a result of the multiplication of the voltage and amperes. The mechanical power is measured in watts as well, and is a result of the multiplication of 2 by pi, by the motor electrical speed, by the torque, and divided by 60. Next we can find the motor efficiency in percentage, which is the result of dividing the mechanical power by the electrical power. The propeller mechanical efficiency is the result of dividing the measured thrust by the measured mechanical power. Similarly, the overall efficiency is the result of dividing the measured thrust by the electrical power. Next we can find the vibration in grams, which indicates the level of vibration which is felt by the motherboard. Next we can see the measured values of each temperature probe which is connected to the motherboard, and finally we can see custom app messages which currently are not used in this test. So overall, as you can probably understand, the RC Benchmark 1585 is an advanced semi-professional thrust stand that is going to enable me to provide you with more accurate data and test bigger motors in comparison to the 1520, which is still a very good affordable hobby grade option. Anyway, that's going to be it for this video, and of course, if you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comment section down below. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up if you like this video, and consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the notifications bell if you're not already subscribed. See you on my next videos, and goodbye.